what is your opinion on humans and how long we're going to be here on earth? Do you think we're ever going to have to leave earth? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, currently all our eggs are in one basket and uh, everything that is precious to us could get uh, eliminated, extinct. Uh, if something catastrophic happens on earth, uh, if uh, an asteroid impacts us, or if there is a, uh, for example, um, a nuclear war or a climate change or something catastrophic. Um, and it would make much more sense to spread our eggs in different baskets and go somewhere else as well and have duplicates of what we hold important and valuable here. It's sort of like um, the Gutenberg printing press. You know, the, there were very few copies of the Bible before the printing press was invented. Then they were all handwritten and each of them was extremely precious. But once the printing press came to exist, uh, there were many more copies. And if something bad happened to one of them, it wasn't a catastrophe. You could make new ones. And um, we can imagine saving life as we know it on earth. And the approach would be similar to what Noah did. You know, in the biblical story of Noah's Ark, there is uh, the story about the great flood that endangered life on earth. And so Noah decided to build an ark uh, and uh, put animals in it so that it will save them. Uh, we can, in principle, design an, a similar approach and build Noah spaceship that will save life on earth. But we don't need to put elephants and uh, you know, whales on it. Uh, we just need to put a, a computer and a 3D printer and if the computer has the information about the DNA of all life forms that, that we care about, then um, this system can go to another planet. And in principle, it could make the life as we know it out of the raw materials uh, that exist there on another planet. You don't need to bring the life with you. You can recreate them as long as we figure out how to make synthetic life. You know, and that's not... Uh, speculative because people are, as, as we speak, people are trying to produce synthetic life in the laboratory. And so I wouldn't be surprised if, we, if within the next few decades, we will be able to do that. And so once we are able to do that, we can potentially produce life on other planets without carrying it from, from Earth and, and just you know using what we know about the genetics and, and so forth in, in making that life over there out of the raw materials there. How long do you think it would be before we would have to do that? Oh, that depends on us, uh, how quickly we uh, inflict uh, wounds on ourselves. You know, if, if we are not uh, smart enough, we might not survive for more than a few centuries from now. Uh, we started developing our technologies about a century ago, and our technologies are advancing um, with... Uh, exponentially with a characteristic time scale of a few years so it's quite possible that uh, within the next century you know we unless we are careful we could develop technologies that will destroy us and then um, you know we need to be really careful about what we do to the planet what we do to ourselves um, we don't pay that much attention to it uh, because we are so close to when technology started developing but once we go a few decades into the future, we will be in a real risk of extinction, I think. And because there would be technologies that could potentially destroy life on the planet. And then we just need to uh, be smart enough to avoid that. And right now, I wouldn't say that we are very intelligent in the way we, we do our politics. Um, uh, there are lots of conflicts and um, we invest most of our efforts in uh, fighting uh, each other, you know, uh, among nations and so forth. And um, that is not the smart approach. We should collaborate, especially on issues that science can address. You know, and you could see that in the context of COVID, right? So when it started in China, there wasn't much uh, sharing of information. There was, and science is global. Science is international. It's supposed to be a mode of collaboration among nations and in promoting a better future for humanity. And I very much hope that uh, ultimately science will prevail and suppress all these tensions among people 
that really could bring us down. You know, if, if you look at the world wars, uh, uh, there was a lot of effort dedicated to killing people and that makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, I think especially recently, I feel like the internet has really made everything in this world so much more transparent. And I think it's it's really, there's a, a big paradigm shift happening, especially with the recent news. I'm sure you've heard uh, the uh, GameStop stocks, the mm -hmm. people online that were buying the stocks that the hedge funds bet against. And 10 years ago, this is something no one understood head hedge funds or the stock market or or what these bets on them failing even were um and, and people were able to benefit off that and essentially create this massive gap this massive gap between the the billionaires on wall street and the average the average working person mm -hmm. blue collar worker and and now it's becoming the internet has made this so much more transparent I feel like this is something that has to happen with side. That's, you know, you can somehow correlate it to what's happening with what you're doing. And now yeah. you released your book and you're talking to everybody about it. Well, one thing I would like to highlight in this context is we tend to think that um, technology and science is superior to the humanities, you know, so humanities are in decline. The study of philosophies, the study of literature and so forth. Uh, young people are more attracted to science and technology. The problem is that we develop tools uh, using science and technology that could destroy us. And the only way to prevent it is to have the humanists telling us how to guide ourselves towards a better future. You know, how to, for example, how to set the rules such that genetic engineering will not end up making you know, people the type that we want and, and all kinds of other issues that come up, like artificial intelligence, you know, if we allow it to make life death decisions uh, on medical issues, um, we have to worry about the, the morality of that. And, you know, at what level do we uh, allow the machine to decide the fate of a person versus having people involved. You know, in the past, it was the doctor that made the decision and you could trust the doctor better because the doctor would be a human that, that uh, has a, a bigger perspective that is more balanced in a way. But if you have a machine deciding, you have to decide about a set of rules of what's moral and what's, what's ethical and how the machine decides who dies and who lives, you know, and uh, there are lots of such issues with modern technologies and the humanities, the way I see it, play a central role. And, you know, I, as a young kid, I was mostly interested in philosophy. I grew up on a farm and then circumstances brought me into physics and astrophysics. Uh, but I value these areas of humanities like philosophy very much. I think they are essential for guiding us to a better future. Without them, uh, we could be nerds developing all kinds of tools that will kill us as a, as a civilization.